So our topic for this week is type of cargoes carried on board ships. So first, dry bulk cargoes. The cargoes that are being carried on board on board bulk carriers. These cargoes are granular in form and are not transported in bulk or package form. This implies that the cargoes are loaded directly into the cargo hold. So dry bulk materials are categorized into five. These are iron ore, coal, grain, bauxite, and alumina and phosphate rock. Iron ores are transported in large quantities and are used mainly as raw material for steel industry. So, kaya nga bulk cargoes ang niloload sa bulk carrier kasi they are loaded in bulk. So, madami. Ito na, ito na lada. So, hindi lang itong five na ito ang commonly na inilalagay or ikinakalga sa barko. So, marami pa rin. So, kagaya ng mga asin. So, yan. Mga sulfur at iba pa. So, madami pa. Coal is needed for making steel and in power plants that run on coal. The carriage of coal has higher risk than that of iron ore with the possibility of suffering spontaneous combustion. So, alam naman natin ang coal ay good conductor of fire. So, yeah. so, hindi lang naman siya ginagamit for making steel. Commonly ginagamit sila to power supply the power plants. So, sa korente, mostly ang napunta akong lugar na gumagamit na ganyan ay ang Japan. So, sa ngayon, ginagawa na ng paraan para hindi na gumamit ng coal at maging eco-friendly na ang mga bansang gumagamit ng coal thermal plant. So, next, grain is difficult to control, plan, and optimize grain shipment because it is seasonal and has an irregular volume and route. So, ito yan sa pinakamahirap na kargada sa mga bulk carrier ships. Kasi ang mga grains, especially ang maes, hindi pe peding, or ang grains mismo, hindi pe peding mabasa. So, ang moisture content yung naalagaan dyan. So, kailangan dapat balance ang temperatura sa loob ng bodega at sa labas. So, bauxite is, a, is the raw material used to make aluminum while alumina is the semi-refined product. So, phosphate is a product of phosphate rock and is used as a raw material for fertilizers. So, yung mga products naman yan or cargos na yan ay hindi sila um, finished products. So, materials pa lang sila or ingredient para magawa yung certain finished product. So, ito ang example ng loading and discharging of bulk carriers or bulk cargos. So, itong sa first picture sa left, upper left, ay coal. So, sa right, ito ay iron ore or sulfur. So, next, dito sa baba, ito ay asin. Salt in bulk. So, hindi siya iodized, ha? So, itong salt na ito ay crystallized. Or kasing lalaki ng mga bato. Or kasing laki ng graba. Ganun kalalaki yan. So, ginagawa daw sila sa paggagawa din ng bote or bottles. Brick bulk cargoes. So, these cargoes are transported in containers or packages. The term brick bulk came from the phrase breaking bulk, which means the extraction of a portion of the cargo of a ship. So, kung saan yung parang tingi-tingi. Ano? Kaya nakabag sila or naka-package form. So, commonly loaded in general cargo ships. So, dyan lang naman ay kakarga malimit ang ganyang kargada. Or ganyan load. So, maybe in form of bags, boxes, drums, or barrels. Historically, the most common form of cargo of shipping. Some cargos are large and no longer B2B packed like motor vehicles, steel girders, and steel coils. So, kung ganyan mga lalaki na, so hindi na naman kailangang ilagay pa yan sa mga bag o drum. No, kailangan lang nila ay tali or secure or lashings. Yun lang ang kailangan nila sa barko. Ito. For example, ng brake ball cargos in pack form. Liquid ball cargos. These cargos are categorized in three main groups. Crude oil and products, liquefied gases, and flexible oil and liquid chemicals. So, yan daw yung tatlong uri ng grupo ng ganitong 
um, kargada. So, crude oil and oil products require specialized handling terminals and large storage tanks. This can be recognized with the presence of large pipes on the terminal where the tank ships burden. So, yan yung pinaka tank, yung tanker vessels at saka yung mga tanker ports kagaya dyan sa shell. So, these types of cargos are loaded and discharged with the use of pumps and take advantage of the force of gravity. It is not pos if it not if this is not possible such as the cases where the tank and tank level is low and gravity can no longer be efficient, terminal uses is pumps to pump out the oil. However, just discharging cargo needs the use of ship's pump. So sa loading and discharging, basta punong-puno pa ang tanke o yung um, source kung saan kinukuha yung yung liquid product or yung gas product, so ginagamitan muna sila sa una ng gravity. So, para makatipid din sa gasolina at saka hindi mapapagod masyado si makina. So, ganun din on board while discharging. So, kahit sa any type ng barko, sa balas, inuuna lagi muna ay ang gravity. So, kapag hindi na kaya ni gravity, saka lang gagamit ng pump. Ano? Products refer to processed petroleum substances such as gasoline, kerosene, and diesel oil. So, alam nyo na naman yung tatlong yan. So, vegetable oils and liquid chemicals such as ammonia and acids are also handled similarly but require even more stringent safety features because of their nature. So, ito kasi mga ito ay medyo delikado at saka syempre sa ating katawan. So, halos lahat naman ng products o kargamento sa barko kailangan ng attention at um, rounds and maintenance and checks habang tinatransport sila sa dagat. So, kailangan natin ma-monitor kung okay ba o wala ba problema ang ating mga kargamento, ang ating bodega mismo, ang ating mga pipes, special pagparating na tayo sa puerto. So, syempre tayo yung taga-transport, tayo din yung taga-alaga ng mga kargamento mismo. So, LNG and LPG transport by sea requires the gas to be liquefied with extreme cooling to a temperature of approximately negative 15 degrees Celsius of by subjecting it to 10 to 12 bar pressures. So, ito kasi mga ganito, syempre, alam natin na kailangan hindi sila magiinit dahil maaaring masunog or magkasunog or sumabog. So, kaya kailangan sila ay nasa negative 50 degrees Celsius yung temperatura ano, para hindi magkakameron ng ignition. So, this is an example of, of a tanker vessel. So, yan. Makikita nyo, ang kanilang deck ay punong-puno ng pipes. So, so this, ito yung mga connections. So, ito yung connection hoses. So, yan dalawa yung binakasahod na in case na may tumulo. So, yan yung iniwasan, syempre, yung oil pollution. Ano, yung mga tulo-tulo dyan, May, may fit na ipinagbabawal din yun. Or baka mamaya, hindi maiwasan na mapalakas yung pagtulo at mapapunta sa ating dagat. So, next tayo ay automotive cargos. So, ito yung mga car carrier ships. So, the automotive market accounts for a sizable section of the bulk trade. Economic growth increase in the demand of automotive cargos for, from cars to buses and large trucks used in hauling commo commodities. Vehicles are driven on board the ships through special ramps, usually located at the back part, and in some ships also at the center. These cars are then parked in multi-level decks connected with the internal ramps according to the loading plan designed by the operators. Lashing are, are used to hold the vehicles in place Especially when the ships rolls and pitches with the waves. So, ang ating mga gantong uri ng kargamento ay kailangan nakalashing or nakatali, secured properly sa loob ng ating barko. So, syempre kapag maalon, so iniiwasan natin magbangga-bangga or magpaandar-andar ang mga sasakyan at hindi masisira ang ating mga kargamento at hindi madadamay yung ibang mga kargamento. So, commonly, ang car carrier ships ay nasa likod yung rampa. Ano? So, kung mapapansin nyo naman sa picture ng car ships, meron silang parang malaking pintuan. So, yun yung rampa. So, 
So, meron ding sample dito sa atin sa mga pier sa Batangas, yung mga Roro Vessels. No, kung saan dumadaan yung mga sasakyan. So, ganun yung style, no? Dedicated car carriers are called pure car carriers or PCCs with the largest having capacity of loading over 6,000 cars so far. So, kung puro kotse lang yan, pure car carrier yan. So, PCC. So, commonly pinakamalaki sa ngayon ay 6,000 cars ang kayang i-load sa kanya. So, trucks and buses can also be loaded on decks that have movable upper deck and allow vertical clearance. So, kaya movable yan para sa ganitong mga uri ng kargamento or automotive. So, yung mga box, eh, trucks rather and buses. So, larger cargoes, cargoes require larger lashings and higher holding capacity. So, syempre, kung mas malaki yung kargamento mo, mas malaki yung sasakyan mo, mas matibay at mas malaki dapat yung lashing mo. Hindi naman pwede gamitin mo yung pangkotse kung ang kargada mo or ang sasakyan ay bus or truck. So, the ships are called pure car and truck carriers, PCTCs, kung halo. Okay. So, ito ang example. So, ito ang makikita nyo dito sa lower right. So, yan yung rampa sinasabi. So, ito yung pupa o yung likurang part. Okay? Tapos yan ay may mga daan. Parang yun sa mga parking ngayon sa SM, lalo dito sa SM Lipa. Ano yung parang may mga daan papunta sa second deck, third deck. Yan. So, ang mga sasakyan dyan ay covered. Hindi pa sila talaga totally exposed yung kanilang tsura para may iwasan yung pagkasira or pagkagasgas. Ayan, dyan kayo makakakita ng iba't ibang uring bagong-bagong sasakyan. Kagagawa pa lamang. So, minsan yung commonly nakikita natin sa ating mga mata, minsan yung mga luxury um, cars ay yung makikita dyan. Next is container cargoes. Containers loaded on board are classified into two forms. The 20-foot container, 1 PEU, and the 40-foot container or 2 EU. So, ito yung sizes ng container. So, dadalawa lang naman Dadalwa lang naman yan. Yung maliit ay 20 foot at syempre yung malaki ay 40 foot. So ano ba ang PEU? So PEU stands for 20 foot equivalent unit. So ito yung standard term used to measure a container ship's cargo carrying capacity. So dimensions of one PEU are equal to that of a standard container measuring 20 feet long and 8 feet tall. So yun yung standard. Okay? So, these are designed in such a way that they can be fitted into slotted cells or stuck on deck. Cell guides are designed to hold the containers in place without the need of use securing devices. Unlike containers stored on decks, they require twist locks to hold them in place. So, kung mapapansin nyo kasi, ang container ships, hindi lang yan nasa labas ang container cargos. Meron din yan sa loob or sa ilalim. Ano, meron din silang cargo hold para dyan. So, syempre kapag nasa loob, hindi ganun ka-secure or safe na yung ating mga containers doon. So, while yung nasa labas, syempre sila yung exposed, kailangan nila ng additional um, twist locks to hold them in a place or yung mga um, lashings natin. Ano, so, may mga naglalagay naman yan na steve doors or minsan yung crew ang pinaglalagay. Pero kailan or sa batas, ang pinaglagay talaga niyan ay mga steve doors. So next, cargo gears called gantry cranes are special port facility to load and discharge cargo. So yan yung nakikita nyo ang um, crane na kumukuha or loading or discharging ng ating mga container. So mapapansin nyo sila kung napabisita na kayo sa Batangas Port. So yan yung, nandun yung white and orange. Ito yung sample ng Grand Crane. Okay. So, ito, yung nasa labas or nasa deck area, so, ito ay dadanin sa loob. So, meron din naman siyang cargo hold. So, ito. So, yan yung nasa picture. Hindi kasi pala makita itong cursor. Next is reefer cargo. So, syempre, reefer, reefer, reefer ships. So, this type of cargo require carefully regulated temperatures and specific handling procedures. Frozen cargo as transported at temperatures of up to negative 26 degrees Celsius like meat and fish. So chill cargo is transported at temperatures above 
the freezing point to prevent decomposition. Examples of this are milk, butter, and cheese. To control temperatures are cargoes that require precisely 13 degrees Celsius like fruits that are shipped semi-ripe and allowed, and allowed to ripe while in transit. So, depende sa kargada natin o sa kargada nyo kung sa refresh ships kayo mapapunta kung ano ba ang inyong ikakarga. So, kung meat and fish or any meat, so dapat negative 26 daw. So, chilled lang kung ito ay mga milk and butter so hindi naman dapat frozen or negative ang inyong temperatura at dapat din naman, hindi naman din ganong kalamigan para sa inyong mga prutas at gulay para hindi naman sila magbritel ano masobrahan kasi kailangan nilang mahinog while nasa biyahe consistent maintenance of the temperature is vital in the operation of refrigerated cargo to prevent deterioration and maintain their freshness licensed engineers are designated on board to ensure that the refrigeration systems are working properly and to avoid even the smallest deviations or fluctuations in the temperatures as this may be disastrous especially for tropical fruits. So, yung kailangan kasi natin ng engineer para sila yung mag-a-adjust mismo. So, meron tayong additional crews. So, meron tayong additional na makasama para sila yung mag-check kung tama pa ba yung ating or gumagana pa ba ng maayos yung ating um, reefer. So, hindi naman kasi pepede na Hindi natin i-check kasi ba mamaya mali na pala yung temperature magka meron ng problema ang ating kargamento. So, ito examples ng ating mga products in reefer cargos. So, good requiring the use of reefers. So, ito ang meat, fruit, seafoods, vegetables, dairy products, chemicals, and pharmaceutical products. So, ayan. So, kung meron man kayong tanong regarding our topic, so you are free to consult me in our messenger. Just PM me during our class hours and consultation hours. So, good luck!